Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So forgive me looking red again, because I've just come out of the shower and today is go, 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 go. Because we're actually going to Tokyo tomorrow morning. So today is like errand running day and we've got so much to do. And then Paolo has gone, has gone into Central to start on the errands and stuff. And then I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll meet you there, I'll meet you there. Yeah, here I am, drawing. So I've got to get my hair cut because I'm looking like Cousin It. Mm -mm. Literally that night. Like, the same. Gotta get a haircut, gotta get money, gotta get some clothes, gotta do laundry, I mean, gotta do everything. Um, but I'm so excited to go to Tokyo. I mean, I've always wanted to go, so dream come true, yeah. Well, follow my Instagram down below if you wanna see me in Tokyo. Anyway, so I need to be quick because he's probably walking around Central in the shops being like, where the hell is he? And I'll be like, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. But here I'm like painting and stuff, so I mean, I'm, I'm lying, I'm lying. Anyway, so today's something a little different. We're gonna do a Q&A. So I put up on my Insta stories um, last week a little question box and asked you guys to ask me anything that was appropriate. I mean, <laughs> not that type of channel. So here we are, I'm gonna illustrate a look while I talk. So I'm gonna try and multitask, not my best talent, but yeah, what can you do? Uh, the look I'm gonna to illustrate today is an Alexander Wang one, ding, which I put here. Oh, and also one last thing uh, before we get into drawing and answering some questions, some Q&A. Uh, when I get to 200 subscribers, which at the moment we're only 29 away from hitting, I'm gonna do some sort of giveaway or prize or something. So help me get to 200 subscribers and then by the time we get there, hopefully I will think of something exciting. Oh, and also the time this video goes live, um, which I think I'm gonna put up on Tuesday or Wednesday, will be in Tokyo. So if anyone's ever been, please comment below any suggestions because I mean, I'd love to know good places to go because I feel like I'm gonna get lost for the whole week. So let's get into it. First question is from Eva Mayen, and he says, can you recommend some fashion illustration books? Please, manners. So I don't have that many, to be honest. I've bought a few over the years, but the best one, it's not an illustration book as in like teaching you how to draw, but it's this one. So Tony Veramontes, um, Oh Beautiful and Damned, because he's literally one of my favorite illustrators ever, ever. Um, but it's just full of like stories and just his amazing artwork. So I would recommend that just for inspiration, not exactly in like a telling you how to draw, but for inspiration and just to be in awe, definitely check this one out. Um, there are a few others that I've bought over the years, but none are like gonna teach you how to draw from start to finish. So the only way you can do that is actually to draw. But I will put up a few here, ding, 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 ding. A few that I've used over the years that I think uh, could be beneficial. So let's try and multitask and draw and talk because I mean, that's the whole point we're here. Okay, Betty Moo Arts has asked, do you think there is more demand for digital or traditional art and fashion and why? To be honest, I don't think there's much, de much demand for either. <laughs> To be honest, I think traditional is probably a bit more in demand just because the whole, um, and this is more of a personal thing, but the whole, um, but the whole appeal of fashion illustration, because I mean, photography has taken over the, the general need for fashion illustration now. Um, and because photography is so digital now, I think to sort of balance it out, I, I do think people enjoy the, the rawness and the realness of seeing some traditional, so you know, some paints, some pens, some just a bit of like, just a bit of getting messy. I feel like that's a bit more desired. But Apple, who do a lot of stuff with illustrators, they definitely obviously advocates for digital illustration. And there's a lot of interest if you sketch on an iPad at a runway and stuff like that. So honestly, I think traditionally, it's probably a bit more exciting to see some with pens and paints just because it's that traditional sense of like, oh my God, they're a painter, they're an artist. But yeah, an iPad gets just as much excitement, honestly. But yeah, I think demand-wise, probably more traditional, um, but depends what your client is. I hope that sort of answers, probably not. Okay, Paolo Eche, I see these two people, hey, hey, friends of the channel. Um, how do you seek out, uh, Paolo Eche, how do you seek out opportunities, collaborations for brand, exhibitions, etc.? Um, so I did touch on this in a Skillshare class. I did um, get people's attention and to get your work out there. Uh, I'm not an expert in it because I mean, I'm not sitting here, millions in the bank account, my name everywhere and my work in adverts and campaigns. But 
I do seek out opportunities, especially when I went, uh, like two months ago, when I went full-time freelance, I emailed my portfolio to anyone and everyone that would like take an email. So I would just, there's one thing I've learned is that saying like a closed mouth doesn't get fed. Like you've got to, you can't just sit back and wait for people to approach you. You've got to literally go out there and seize the opportunity. So you've got to make the opportunity. Because a lot of people love the work of illustrators and they, like even brands that follow you, etc. But they're looking at you and they're like, well, how do we use you? Because, you know, photos are doing the job of you. So like, what, do, what can you bring to the table that's going to be any different? So what I've found best is to email people, email people and literally let them know what you can do for them. Because people do want to work with illustrators, they just don't know in what capacity. So if you email and you're like, hey girl, like, I can do an in-store event for you. I can, you know, we can work on some content together. We can do a collaboration, whatever. And you put that thought into their mind. Um, then they've got that whole reasoning to like, ah, oh, that's how I can use it, you know? Because otherwise they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. So if you help plant that seed in their mind, then it's definitely beneficial. But I would just say email, you know, companies and DM people, just get your work out there as much as possible. Hound people, not hound them, that's probably the wrong way to put it. Um, but just, just get your work out there in front of as many people as possible, but the relevant people. So don't email like a sales assistant you should be emailing a press assistant, you know? So to just remember that. Okay, Paulina, next question. Next. Paulina Mas... Oh, I should have read this before in practice. <laughs> Paulina Misukova. Ah, nailed it. Um, what was your first freelance work as a fashion illustrator? So my first proper job was in uni and I got a commission from, he was a big, it wasn't him it was his girlfriend but he was a big designer on instagram like this was back in like 2012 he had like half a million followers and which is still big now let alone you know six years ago and his girlfriend was looking for a fashion illustrator so i think she was doing the design at uh, uni or something so i just emailed my work in i ended up getting that job um and it was basically to illustrate her collection and i remember it was the biggest commission i've ever got up until then um it was to illustrate about 15 looks in like a few days. I really charge not great prices, but I mean, I was young. I think it was like £10 an image or something, which to me in uni, when I was skint and just trying to buy vodka and make ends meet, that was a lot. So that was my first proper work. And the reason that is so that job means so much to me now is because I got a shout out by the guy that had half a million uh, followers. And I remember going to sleep one night and I had like 400 followers on Instagram, you know, just friends, family, whatever. Um, and then it, I woke up and he had to give me a shout out and then I went up to like 1,200. Um, and back in the early days of Instagram, that was a lot. I mean, it's not much now, obviously, but back then it was like, if you're over a thousand, not many people were. It's like, whoa, you're famous, sort of. Um, so that means a lot to me because for a while I had a lot of engagement, a lot of interest in my work. So definitely beneficial to me, but but yeah, I literally just got that because I think a friend tagged me in their post for doing a call out. So I mean, as long as you've got a few friends and just keep an eye out for you, that was my first job. So Paulina has also asked another question, which is, and do you have an education in this field or am I self-taught? Um, this is a question I get a lot, actually. I'm actually technically self-taught because I never studied illustration. Um, but I did, what I did at uni was, uh, fashion photography so it's still in fashion and it still helped me and I did do illustration in my work because my photos were awful so I just covered them up with illustrations um, but no I've never had formal training in illustration but I mean self-taught as in like literally just drew and drew and drew but also researched and was inspired by lots of people and have, have had lots of feedback over the years from people that helped me improve my work so in that sense, yeah, I'm self-taught. I've not got a degree in anything, well, illustration related, but can you hear the laundry? Like, <laughs> I don't know much about illustration as a degree because I mean, I never did, a friend of mine that I live with did, but um, as in a fashion illustration degree, I don't know much about. I know there's a few like London College of Fashion does it and stuff, but I don't know much about the course. I don't know how beneficial it is to you, but I just found that as an artist, like, the best thing you can do is to just draw and practice. So it doesn't matter if you've got someone teaching you how to do that or if you're doing it off your own back. No practice, um, nothing is gonna be better for you to improve than to just literally sit there, practice and draw. 
So now you have Batisova. Oh, I'm so bad at names. Um, she asks, when did you visit Fashion Week for the first time ever and how was it? So my very, very first Fashion Week was with uni. Um, we had to go there and shoot Street Style. We stayed in this horrible hostel, it was a nightmare. But yeah, I, I managed to get into like one show because we literally waited outside and like, they were just like, I'll just go in. Like, <laughs> I think they felt sorry for us. It, it was amazing in the sense that it was my first ever fashion show. And I remember standing, I mean, because it was standing, like they made us stand, not sit because who are we to take up a seat? And just thinking, oh, I do, like this runway show, I mean, it's all this work and everything put into like literally five or 10 minutes. And I remember thinking, okay, this is what I can relate to because for years I would go around museums and art galleries and I'd be like literally around them within like 20 minutes. And I thought, I can't understand people that stand there and, and marvel at something for like an hour. So fashion where it's quick, 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 but like, I can relate to that and because then you move on to the next thing and it's done. So for me, that, that, cemented in my mind that fashion was probably the best way for me to put my own artwork and my own talent into something. Uh, but yeah, it was amazing to see the first runway show and it was great to just see everything in person and I do recommend going. I think it's a lot harder to get into Fashion Week now but I do have a video which I'll pop up here uh, about how to get to Fashion Week. But if you can go, do go because it's eye-opening and it's exciting. Okay, next question is... Emily Amanda Illustrations has asked, how long does it take to make one original on A4 in general? Um, so I use, well, I get a lot of stick from people, especially illustrator friends, uh, because I'm really quick at drawing and I can literally finish like a proper illustration in about 20, 25 minutes. But if I'm, if I'm working on it a bit harder and I'm laboring over it a little bit and it's more considered, then I can, you know, take up to an hour, hour and a half. But yeah, I don't, I don't spend too long on pieces because I find I overwork them, especially when my style is quite minimal. Um, I need to probably, the less I do, the better it looks. I find if I labor over it, I really mess it up. So that's the average. So yeah, between, if I want to do a good, good piece, like about an hour. Okay, K Fong 88 Ken, which is a friend of mine, has asked, is there any medium techniques you would never use and why? Let's see, no, there's nothing I wouldn't use. I mean, there's stuff I've tried before and it's not really worked. Looking back at the artwork, it's not really worked out for me. Um, like I went for a phase with charcoal and now I look back at all that work and just think it looks muddy and messy and skank. Skank. Uh, I think it's quite interesting to see how your style changes or adapts when you use a different medium. So I've, lately I've experimented with ink. Um, I'm gonna try gouache next and then there's pigment markers from Winsor Newton which I wanna give a go. But there's nothing I would categorically say like, no, get that out of my face. Okay, Taylor Sews. So Taylor Sews has, has asked, how do you begin a fashion sketch? I find starting a sketch the hardest thing. I would agree with that, but that's mainly because I'm lazy and I'm like, as soon as I sit down and I start, you know, that's fine, I'm gonna finish it. But it's a lead up to it. I'm like, oh God, do I really have to do this? <laughs> I'm like, I could just go a nap or something, I mean, please. But um, how I start a sketch is I would look for either a photo to reference a pose or I will think of a pose and just sketch out a few ideas until I'm like, you know, set on that's the one that looks good. Um, so once I've got the pose sorted, oh no, actually, sorry, that's a lie. I lied to you. Um, I will, so first of all, I will obviously decide what I'm gonna draw. So I'll look for the, the look, the garment that I'm gonna illustrate or the person I'm gonna illustrate. And then, um, then I will decide on the pose. So I will either use a photo as reference or just draw a few ideas and pick one. Then I will just, well, you're gonna see now anyway, because of me, I'm recording myself drawing. But yeah, so that's how I would start. As long as I've got an idea of what I'm gonna draw, because I feel like if I don't before I start, then it's just gonna to turn to shit. So I would just say, make sure you know precisely what you're gonna draw in the sense of like what garment, what pose, etc., the colors and all that, and the style can sort of change. But yeah, as long as you've got that idea of what it's gonna look like, then you know what you're aiming for and you can't mess it up too much, he says as he messes up his drawing. <laughs> okay, so Hung WYW has asked, how did you find a good printer to print your work? Um, I don't print a lot of my work really, because I mean, I do sell a few prints, but I've forgotten about my Etsy shop for a while. <laughs> but I stumbled upon uh, the print space, who are London-based and they're based in Old Street. And the reason I use those is because I've always been told that, I can't say, Gil, Gil, Gliche or Gilche or either one of those is probably wrong. 
Um, Gilche, Gilche, I'm gonna have to reference this later. Edit in a voice note or so I can be saying it properly. But that's meant to be the best style of printing because it's more, so it's more faithful and textual to the original. So it's not a flat print, it's got a bit of texture, it's got a bit of depth to it. So I searched for one of those and then the printer that stood out to me was the print space because they, because they sent samples of their paper to you and then they also were just London based and they had a lot of good feedback. Um, and the prints I've had done from them are really, really great. You just obviously got to make sure your scanned file is edited and everything's perfect. But I would say that that's really, really good. Um, they're really good to use if you are London based. They're quite expensive because, not they're not expensive, but the printing style is expensive. But that's who I would suggest. If you are London based, they also deliver, and they deliver like within 24 hours if need be, all same day, so it's very, very good and very useful. Oh, another one from Paulina Miskukova. Opportunist, free questions, yes. Uh, is that even possible to sketch right on the runway? Isn't the runway so quick? This is something I get asked a fair amount because it's true. Um, runways are so fast. Um, runways are so fast and like, it's hard to draw properly. Like, you, I'm not expect. I don't think, so I don't expect myself to do like a full-on illustration while I'm watching a runway show. Um, but what the things I do to sort of preempt it a little bit is if I draw my faces first, so literally just the features, then I can add in the hair. Because um, obviously there's different styling for each runway show. So I will add in the hair and then add in the clothes and the garment. But I mean, if you're sketching at a runway show, you're not really sketching to do a full-on illustration in two seconds. Um, I do it just to get a feel for the garment, to highlight key pieces that I want to spend time on later. Um, you know, show key details of the garment, so if there's certain buttons, you know, zips, whatever, just little key details, little moments. Um, so that's what I would say, but yeah, I'm, I am actually going to do a video soon of me watching a live stream and trying to illustrate as they walk, which I think will be a nightmare but I'm gonna do it just to show people how how much you can really aim. And I'm, I mean, I'm a quick drawer, uh, but I still can't do it properly. So I mean, just to show you what to expect. So don't expect like to set up your paints, your easel and everything, and then expect to come out with like Mona Lisa after the runway show, like not gonna happen. But um, yeah, stay tuned for that video. So that's gonna come when I come back from Tokyo. Okay, Sophie um, E has asked, how do you manage to get yourself motivated and inspired? See, this is a tricky one, because I mean, especially as an artist and as a freelancer, you've not really got anyone breathing down your neck to produce work, especially if it's not your know, personal work or if it's unpaid or whatever. Because I mean, for the last, like, well actually no, since I was younger, I've been drawing for literally no money, just because it's passion. Um, so I mean, I've often thought like I could literally stop tomorrow and it wouldn't change anything. No one would be like, you know, oh my God, I need this from you, you know? So there's literally, it's definitely the wrong industry or the wrong profession to go into if you don't feel like you can't not do it. But I, I, I keep myself inspired by just, you know, especially because I'm a fashion illustrator, just looking at latest fashion and or, runway shows etc with red carpets and I'll just look at something and be like oh my god like I need to paint you I need to paint you to stay motivated honestly we all go and like we all dip um so I would say sometimes you feel motivated sometimes you don't some days I'm like mm, I do not want to sit down and paint um and I just don't I mean luckily I didn't don't have a deadline or anything like that so I would just not if I don't feel that motivated I'm not going to go and do it because it will force it and I will just get frustrated. Um, but overall motivation as in like, having to, you know, try to be a freelance illustrator or trying to build up to be a freelance illustrator for the last six years or whatever, um, it gets tricky because like it does, you do start to think that you're producing all this work for free just to post on Instagram to get nothing from it. Um, so it is hard to stay motivated uh, constantly, but I'm just, I'm in the mindset that head down, because I mean, things are starting to happen for me now. And yeah, like I said, I've been posting my work on Instagram for six years. I mean, not everything's happening right now. I'm still not making 
fully enough of illustrating to live off of it completely um, because I do a marketing job freelance as well but I do say that just I just think head down like head down working don't stop see <laughs> so my <laughs> The boy just rang and was like, where are you? I'm like, oh, I'm just waiting for the laundry. Like, it's not that I've been recording a video for the last half an hour. Um, but yeah, I would say it's definitely tricky. It's not the easiest thing to stay motivated when you're not getting the results you want, when you're not getting the money, etc. I just think, what would I rather be doing? I want to draw and, you know, illustrate and post it and share my artwork for free anyway. So I just think I would be doing it regardless of if I'm trying to make it a career or not. So, because it's in me to do it, so I just think, obviously you have some downtime where you're like, oh my God, like no one likes my work, I'm not gonna make any money, it's never gonna happen. Um, but snap out of it. Because you've just gotta think like, it happened when it's meant to happen, and I know it's not meant to happen for everyone. I do get some days where I'm like, oh my God, maybe I will never get to the stage I wanna get to. Um, but I just, you just gotta have some faith and just keep trying because I mean you're never you're definitely never gonna get there if you give up so you've got to be stubborn you've got to be um, persistent you've just got to keep doing it and keep going and keep going so it's very tricky and it's not for everyone because you're not gonna see results straight away but um it's just that thing deep down in me and I'm like no like you're gonna make it you're gonna make it even if it's in like two years five years ten years you're gonna get there so it's pure stubbornness, pure stubbornness. But I would just say keep going. You take a break if you need to take a break and then come back to it and just continue. But we've, we've all been there. Okay, Sophie has asked as well, how do you work out your pricing? So I work out my pricing, I still something I struggle with. I've actually signed up to um, the side. oh my God. Something like the Society of Illustrators or Associate of Illustrators or something. Um, and they're like £16 a month. And you can email them with a brief from your client and they, you know, write to use, how everything, and then they will give you a rough price of what you should charge. Because I know charging for work is hard, because at uni I used to charge £5 a drawing, because it only took me like a, well, still took me like half an hour, an hour, but for me in UD, £5 was a lot of money. Um, so it's relative, but do not undersell yourself because then that will set the market value for you at that price, which, you know, it's, it's gonna be hard to try and work your way up from that. Um, but you've also gotta think, they're not just paying for the hour it takes you to sketch, they're also paying for every email that you send, the marketing it's take to get their attention, um, the 25 years I've been on this planet drawing and sketching to get to the level I am now. You're also thinking they're, tra they're paying for the Mac or the laptop or whatever that you're using to email them, the phone, you know, they, there's a lot more into it than just like, I'm not gonna pay 200 pound for a sketch. I mean, it takes you two minutes. It's like, hmm, it's taking me 25 years to get to this stage. So you're paying for that bitch. Um, but yeah, if in doubt, ask an illustrator friend or Ask them what's their, their budget because it's always good to know what they have in mind, which is normally a lot lower than you probably want because people don't tend to value illustration as much or they tend to think it's not priced as much as it should be. I don't know, it's strange. Um, but yeah, I would definitely recommend signing up to them just because they've helped me out a couple of times with just getting, it's so hard when you get a brief and you've literally no idea where to begin. So I would just say sign up to those if, if need be, or, or if you want, just anyone can give me a DM and I'll try and help out as much as I can. Um, and don't, definitely don't feel guilty because you like drawing or anything like that. Like that's nothing to do with it. I mean, Christina Aguilera likes singing, but she still charges you, you know what I mean? So remember that. Okay, so I'm gonna fine liner and um, Sharpie this piece and then I'm finished. And the last question is, from Joanna MX, she said, do you plan to study at university one day? I like that if this implies you don't think I've already gone to university, so you think I'm young, so I'm happy with that. But yeah, like I said earlier, I did already study at uni. Um, I studied from 
2011 to 2014. So I graduated with a first in fashion photography. I studied in Falmouth in Cornwall. Um, but if you mean going ahead, no, I do not plan on going back to university to study illustration or anything like that, just because I don't think it will benefit me in the sense of, um, I, I just feel like I'm gonna benefit myself more learning on the ground, if that makes sense, like learning through mistakes, learning, doing it myself and just drawing. Um, but if you really, but uni is a strange one. I mean, I loved my time at university because even though I didn't study what I'm doing now, it still helped and it still gave me three years cushioning of like getting to be an artist, getting to experiment, find your style. Um, and just yeah, experiment with your own work, which I think is so helpful because my work from the beginning of uni to the end of uni completely different and it's just nice to, it's sort of almost like a residency, a residency, like you can just produce work and you, you know, you've got the money behind you to a certain extent. Um, so just use that time to get creative, do as much as you can, because you're never going to have that time free again, really to, um, really to just try stuff out. So I definitely recommend doing it as almost a residency. Um, I mean, uni is very hard work, but when the experience I've had, you, your degree doesn't mean too much. I mean, I'm sorry to say, but um, after you get your first job out of uni, and even then they didn't really care what grade I got, it was just that I had a degree. So it doesn't mean too much. What means so much more is hard working and talent and your portfolio. So I don't think that people should stress that, oh, I can only do this if I've been to uni to get a degree because the creative, uh, the creative industry isn't like that. If you've got an amazing portfolio, that speaks so much more than having a two, one or a first in a degree. Okay, so now I've finished with the Sharpie. This illustration is done. So yeah, that was a Q&A. So thanks for everyone who asked the questions. I'll do another one in like a month or so's time when people can think of some more, uh, some more exciting questions. Um, like I said, I'll be in Tokyo when this is live. So if you've got any recommendations or you want to see me travel on my Tokyo travels, um, go follow me on Instagram. If you've got any recommendations for Tokyo, then pop them in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe below because I've got some exciting videos in my mind that I need to start cracking on with. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and it wasn't too boring and see you next time. Almost forgot, gotta do this video's art shout out. So as I've said in previous videos, every video I do, I will feature an artist at the end of the video if you've shared my latest video on your Instagram stories. So this video is Da Silva. I've, I hate this because I always say the names in my mind and then when you say it out loud, you're like, mm -mm, that's not it. Anyway, I'll put her work here and here. But her work is, you know, beautiful. I love how clean the lines are. There's some great prints she uses. There's like a tropical, upbeat feel to all her work and it's colorful, it's vibrant, it's beautiful. Beautiful. And yeah, I will pop her Instagram down below. So do give her a follow if you like the look of her work. And if you want to be featured in the next video's uh, artist shout out, then just put this video on your Instagram stories and you will be entered and I'll pick one at random. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Ooh, I'm late, I gotta go.